welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, March 26th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day. The Navajo Nation has unveiled an $18 million complex for the tribe's Department of Transportation. About 250 people attended the ceremony last week in Se Benito near the Arizona-New Mexico border. Navajo President Ben Shelley says the 52,000 square foot building is amongst the most environmentally friendly tribal buildings. It has solar panels and walls and floors are made with recycled materials. The complex also includes an office for the Navajo Code Talkers Foundation. The group is working to raise money for a museum and a veterans center. The complex sits on state land. Shelley says he's working to trade land with the state of New Mexico. The building was funded by the tribe, the federal government, and the state of New Mexico. Alaska Magistrate Mike Jackson of, uh, of uh, Keiki first heard of uh, circle sentencing in the mid-1900s when alcohol-related uh, problems in his village were, uh, were uh, raised to the top of issues. The city had higher rates of accidental deaths, child abuse, and suicides than just about anywhere in the state. The idea of forming circles, Jackson learned, was for a moderator to bring together family, friends, and others who know a victim or offender to help a judge hand down a fair sentence by considering local history, community beliefs, and other views of a defendant's background. It uh, was used after a guilty plea or a conviction. He tried out the idea in 1999 with a woman convicted of crimes related to her alcohol addiction. She had previously refused inpatient treatment. At the circle, state authorities told her it was her last chance before losing her children, and her friends and family persuaded her to get some help. She came back and was sober, said uh, Dina Asavita, who helped organize the circle and 66 other circles since. In 2003, researchers for the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University visited the city and decided to honor the community for its efforts at justice reform. A report on the town said the circle's successes was occurring where the state court system had repeatedly failed. Cecilia Miller of the Tohono O'Dum Nation opened her first fry bread house in 1992 using the same fry bread recipes and techniques she learned as a child. She tops the hand-stretched deep fry dough with such savory toppings as red chili stew and uh, carrizo and cheese in her desert fry bread with a killer combination of butter and chocolate. Her food has always won praise from her local customers. Now her restaurant has been ranked by culinary experts as among the best in the country. Fry Bread House was one of five restaurants nationwide to receive a America's Classics designation March 13th from the prestigious James Beard Foundation, which hands out the restaurant industry's version of the Academy Awards each year. It is the first native-owned restaurant to receive the designation since the awards were started in 1998. The Fry Bread House in Central Phoenix is a tiny, loud, nondescript spot on North 7th Avenue near Indian School Road. Come during the lunch hour rush and you'll find yourself at the end of a long line snaking back from the order here counter and out the front door. The family operates a second location in Mesa near Dobson and Baseline Roads with the same menu and recipes. Members of the Confederated Salish and Katune tribes are trying to prevent an underground copper and silver mine beneath the Cabinet Mountains Wilderness in northwestern Montana by getting a sacred peak designated on the National Register of Historical Places. Francis Ald, a Katune tribe cultural preservation officer, said members are working to get 7,018-foot Chicago peak recognized under the National Historic Preservation Act as a traditional cultural property. Chicago Peak is a very sacred site within many stories, all to told the Missoulin. It is a place of sustenance and it is one of the last untouched places where the Katune can visit and reconnect with their cultural history. We don't want to end up with a hollowed out mountain. Spokane, Washington-based Revit Minerals, Inc. wants to mine up to 10,000 tons of copper and silver in the area. President John Shanan Ha 
excuse me, Shanann Han said the company is sensitive to the concerns of tribal members. The mine entrance will be located outside the wilderness boundary, but mine shafts would tunnel beneath the wilderness and about 1,000 feet below the mountain. An Oklahoma tribe has purchased a restaurant on Grand Lake that offers sightseating river boats and a marina for $3.9 million. The Seneca Cayuga announced the purchase of Royal Bay Restaurant, Royal Bay Convention Center, Royal Bay Marina, and two Cherokee Queen River boats this last Friday. The multi-deck paddle-wheeled river boat specialize in scenic cruises, parties, and weddings on Grand Lake. Officials say they plan to extend the operation hours of the restaurant and the river boat, but Tribal Economic Development Director Hoya Bacon said there's no plans for a riverboat gaming. In 2007, the Miami-Oklahoma-based tribe applied to the Bureau of Indian Affairs for 30 acres to be held in trust for gaming purposes. Those plans include a 100,000-square-foot, $60 million casino and resort, which would employ about 450 people. Reader's Digest wants to know what makes your community the most interesting town or City in America, from now until May 31st, uh, 2012, locals are invited to log in at readersdigest.com forward slash America to share personal stories and photos that illustrate what makes their town special. The offer of the winning story will receive a cash prize of $1,000 and their town will be featured on the cover in an upcoming issue of Reader's Digest magazine. This is an opportunity for individuals to shine and possibly bring national attention to their hometowns. In addition, each week a new American town will be named America's Most Interesting Town by popular vote and will be featured on the website and an incoming, upcoming issue of Reader's Digest. Locals can show their support and their community spirit by logging in and voting for their own town as many times as they like. So let's see if we can't get a, a native village into the Reader's Digest. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and come back again and again. Miigwech.